Welcome back to another episode of Land Rover Restorations. In this episode, we're going to be repairing the front panel and filling up with water, hopefully put the radio on, and the electrics, hopefully. And getting ready to start putting some body work on. So, yeah, first job we've got to do is the front panel. Um, it's pretty rotten, I'll show you now. And, yeah, we'll get going. So... There's the front panel that the radiator mounts to. You can see the original red colour and it's rotten. So I'm going to cut out along there, around here, there, and with some new sheet make a piece and get that welded, get it all cleaned and spray it red. I have sprayed a little bit of red on the side, which is a bit bright, <laughs> but that is its colour. That's an outside panel. And there's the radiator there, so I've got to clean all that up and paint that black and just check that's all good for leaks. Original radio I would have thought. Oh, that says services. Anyway, so that's what we're doing um, now, so yeah, I'll make a start on that and then I'll get you back when we've possibly done some welding or doing some welding. Okay, here she is, welded up. So, complete new panel on the bottom, which I just made. That's some steel, obviously bent it round right there. New infill bit in there, and a new infill bit in there. And I've just put some paint strip on it and cleaned it back a bit. So what I'm going to do now is clean those welds down a bit more and fill a smooth over the top just to finish it, sand it all back and then probably spray the whole area with just a bit of surface filler that I've got just to get rid of any imperfections and then we'll spray it red. Um, and there it is, finished and sprayed. So obviously it was all rotten wasn't it, yeah we saw just now, all welded, filled and sprayed the red. So there she is, all good. I've also done the radiator, cleaned all this up, hammerated that, so that's all good. So obviously that radiator then bolts onto the back of there, and the lights um, go in there. So I've ordered some new metal uh, chrome surrounds for the outside of the lights, and I might also replace these chrome surrounds. I'll see how they clean up. Um, and obviously the lights can go back in, put the lights back in, put the radiator on, and then it can go where it lives, bottom hole, hose, top hose, and thermostat connected up. So that's where you'll see it next. And there it is in place. So bolt it all on, put the, obviously bolt the radiator back onto it, clean the radiator up. Put the wiring back together. There's like a socket in here that the wiring loom plugs into. I've replaced these grills around here with nice new ones, but I just cleaned these inner ones up. But looking at them now, I think I'm going to replace them eventually. So, yeah, that's sort of, I can't get far enough away. That's a sort of front view. Cool, so I've also just cleaned up all the handbrake. Here's a handbrake. Just cleaned that up and painted that. And there's the little rod that goes between. And basically, the handbrake just bolts onto there, which I'll do in a minute. It goes down, and then the rod connects onto this, which operates all the drum we did last time. So, that will be that. Next time, we we'll just the sun's outside cleaning this tray that holds the battery. Um, we'll get the bolt head, bulkhead bolted on and start looking at the steering, getting that back on. Okay, so handbrake's done, which was, your watch is quite simple. Um, handbrake bolts onto the chassis. There, if you can see the tie rod down there, the tie rod goes down. 
onto a little hoojima flip which transfers it from upward movement to backward movement into the into the drum there so on and off perfect obviously you need adjusting later on so handbrake's done I've finished bolting the bulkhead into place now so the bulkhead is positioned pretty sure I've got the bulkhead in the right place because I've measured all sorts of places between the bulkhead that bulkhead um, chassis rails all sorts so hopefully it's in the right place but it is adjustable can move it later so yeah um, all good what I'm going to do now is attack the steering box and get that put back in so obviously that's where your steering wheel bolts on shaft all the way down to the steering box here this is minging um, so I'm going to strip it all down we'll have a look at it I've got some got uh, I've got a service kit for it so we'll see what it's like inside when we take it apart and yeah I'll show you once we get going okay so just doing the steering box now start to clean it up I want to get it apart really so I can clean each individual part it'll be a lot easier just taking this plate off the side and I've never taken one of these apart before okay so basically steering wheel goes on that end you have a big shaft then there's like a worm gear, I'll try and show you in a minute, but my hands are minging. There's a worm gear in there that drives um, like another sprocket that goes up and down the worm gear, which in turn turns this end over here, which basically changes direction of turn from that way to that way, so it's like a 90 degree box. So you've got that bit there, that bearing, not really a bearing, runs up and down in there. that bit and then hopefully lift it up to get enough clearance so what I'll do is next I'll take these bolts off here and the bottom bolts off which you take the two um, bearings out hopefully so again we might speed this up Okay, so this is shimmed as we had, I don't know if you remember, ages ago in the steering at the front of where the wheels are. So obviously this is shimmed and that obviously pushes with just the, I'll have to look in the manuals here, I've got to set this back up, but that's shimmed to keep pressure, again, same as the front wheels, um, to put pressure on the, on the shaft to make your steering a bit more rigid. Um, if it was all floppy and loose in there, obviously you'd see it will just be all loose. So I'll have to look in the manual, see how I've got to set this up. There's, ooh, there's more shims on there. That's it, yeah. Okay, so what I'll do now is take this end off. Um, I don't know if I can just show you inside before I take it all apart. Okay, so... There you go. That is the that's the worm gear in there. Can you see it all? Yeah. It's disgusting. It's it hasn't had any oil in it for a long time. Right, okay, I'll take this end off now. Okay, so I can see how it's got to come apart. These bearings are in the ends. I want to pull the shaft off, but I can't because all the ball bearings are going to go everywhere. But I have bought a 
service kit for it. I'm just hoping that you know, the right bearings, if they're not the right bearings, I'm going to have to try and catch them all. So. Okay, apart. So we, we did it all with Abe. Well, I did it all with Abe, just dropping too many bits, but we have dropped some bits. So, can you see? Can you see? Can you see? That goes on to there. We had that on there, which is obviously the. That's how it was, took the plate off. There's the other side of the worm gear. It sits in there. With some nice big chunky monkey bearings in it. So that sits in the middle. Took that off. Just took the cap on the end of there. And there's your there's your steering shaft basically, and there's the worm gear. So that worm gear I showed you just then sits on there. There's all the bearings falling out of these. So these are the two end bearings, which just slip on. So what we can do is I can clean everything up now, get it all painted and sorted. Um, then we put new bearings in either end, new bearings in the worm gear. We put it back together again, uh, wind the worm gear back on, new seals. Yeah, fill it up with some nice new oil and it will all be serviced and done. So all I'm going to do now is clean all these bits up. Oh, there's the shaft, sorry. Didn't show you that. That shaft obviously goes all the way through. And that, basically the worm gear sits on there and that goes over to your um, sort of first arm that starts operating the steering. So it's all really straightforward really. So I'll get on and clean all this up now. Um, it's all apart. So that's what the big bearings are for if you ever do a kit. The big bearings go in here and then the little bearings are for the two, two ones either end. Um, which is okay because I've lost half the little bearings when I took it apart. The bearings sit in, just sit in the end like, just drive in the end like ordinary bearings do. And then obviously you have to figure out how many shims um, for the resistance, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but I will look in the manual and see what the manual says. Here yeah, we have a bit of clean up now, start cleaning this all up. Okay, so I have now painted all of the bits, cleaned them up and painted them. Um, epoxy mastic, I've actually got some numbers in here, I don't know if you can see them, some printed numbers. I don't know what the other mean, but. Clean it all up, epoxy mastic paint because it goes direct on the aluminium, um, steering shaft, all the rest of it, plates. So basically, as I explained last time, the steering shaft comes through here, which is that. The shaft comes down with the worm gear on the end. That sits on the worm gear. As you turn the steering wheel, you move that shaft and in turn move the worm gear and in turn move that basically, very basically. I've had a look into the adjustment and the adjustment is a certain pressure on the steering wheel um, which I will set up just with the shims on the bottom. Um, I've put a new, in this steering box kit that you get from Dingo Croft, um, there's a new bush in here, one's bush that I've put in, a new rubber seal for here a new gasket for here, gasket for either end, and new ball bearings for the, which sit in here, for the worm gear, so nice new ball bearings for in there, and obviously ball bearings for either, um, bearing either end of the shaft. So what I'm going to do now is I'll rebuild all this, I'm not going to film it because um, I think I've explained it enough how I think, well how it does all go back together, um, so I'll get on and get all this rebuilt now. When it's all rebuilt, I'll show you that, and then we get it on the vehicle and try it out, um, get some oil in it. Okay, I just want to show you this, all back together. Um, okay, so yeah, one gear turns. One gear moves that. 
There's the new bearings up in there. All new bearings in there. All new bearings in there. And I've just got you that shaft here. It's in there. Okay, I'll get it all back together now and get it on the vehicle. Okay, so steering box is now in place. Um, all done, obviously just bolts on through here. And I've been advised you fill it up with either EP90 or engine oil. So I had engine oil that I've put, just put in the engine. So I filled it up with engine oil and it's all dry, no leaks. Turns really nice. Um, so yeah, as I said, just filled this up with engine oil. I think it needs about six or seven litres, something like that, I think it was. Um, top hose, radiator hose is on. And bottom hose is now on. So I've also filled up with water, thermostat. Let's see. Yes, still nice and full. So no leaks, which is good. Um, well, water and antifreeze mix. Put the distributor on, um, took the old leads off. This is quite cool, the distributor. I've never seen one like this before, but in here, well you can't really see it with a camera, but up here there's flat-ended screws. And when you put the wires in here, your HT leads, which is the coil of this that I bought, when you put it in here, like so, the screws screw up in and puncture and hit the inner core. So you can make up your own HT leads, which is pretty cool. So I'll be doing that at some point, setting the ignition timing up. There's all the spot plug cups ready to go, distributor all ready to go. So we're set, setting up at some point, but not now. Um, I'm going to get the steering finished now. So there's the steering box, as I just said. I've also comes up through here. I bought myself a new seal. So you put this um, sort of foam seal in there. And then I've painted this bit to match the bulkhead. And then that goes over the top with a couple of screws, holds it in place to seal it. It's got any drafts coming through. So I put that on and set the steering up. So what I've done is I've taken the front, this is the sort of the track wall if you like, that goes from the steering to the relay. So this sits here. There's the relay at the front, which is obviously goes through and attaches to all the steering we did last time. And then this end comes around and attaches to the steering box. So I've taken this off, I've painted it all up, cleaned it, ground it down because it's quite rusty. There's the old sort of track rods. I bought some new ones for the end. Obviously, again, one's left hand and one's right hand. So you screw them in. Um, these are the clamps, put the clamps on, same as before, and there's your two. One comes off the steering box, uh, that one comes off the steering box, and that one goes to the relay. And then, yeah, same as before, you put it on the vehicle, and then to adjust it, you just turn the bar, and it either makes it bigger or smaller. So I'll get all that on now, um, and then I'll show you when it's all on. Okay, so it's all on. Um, there you go. There's the arm, goes down, new track rod, track rod end, sorry, through, and onto the relay. So here, turn the steering wheel, I haven't got the steering wheel on there, but turn the steering wheel, now the wheels turn, um, so all good. I've also put this on as well, this just bolts on, this is the battery tray here, and this is where the air filter goes. So that's on as well. <coughs> so... Um, what we're going to do now is the, let's like say, all that's finished now. Steering's all done, apart from putting the steering wheel on. Oh yeah, we did the, showed you that we did that last time, the, the new seal in there, it's all bolted on now, and I've actually bolted my plate on as well. And that was on the old bulkhead, now on the new bulkhead. Um, I put the rubbers in for the pedals as well, the clutch and brake pedal. 
a couple of rubbers, they're still good condition, so I've used them. So yeah, we're going to do the pedals now. So basically the pedals go through there. Uh, yeah, come out of here, down, and then they connect on. So these are just like the actual pedal bits here. And then one of them connects on to the brake. And obviously operates the brake in and out. And the other one is on the shaft and connects through there to the other side to the clutch. Um, so there's your shaft that they all sit on. Both the pedals sit on there. And then one of them connects directly to the brakes and the other one has a little shaft that goes through, does the clutch. I'll show you, they're on the desk, um, ready to be all taken apart and sorted out. So here they are. So there's the shaft that just bolts into the chassis up the front. And here's the two pedals, so you're sort of looking from the top. That'd be the brake in the centre. No, nope, that'd be the brake in the centre. Which your throttle would be over here. Clutch, brake. So the clutch attaches with this rod and then goes on to that shaft, which goes through the chassis and then direct drives the clutch. Um, so they both sit. So that shaft is rigid and then these both sit on there and they move so obviously they need bushes um, I started just slipping this one off to have a look there's that bush and there's a spacer then there's another bush um, and here they are got some new bushes ready to put in so I put the new bushes in this shaft up here as well they should have two bushes one this end and one that end and as you can see this one is pretty worn out that clutch pedals operated a few times Okay, so all bits painted and cleaned up. Um, so what this shaft that I said last time, well just now, bolts into the chassis, is that just basically bolts straight in and then we have the brake and clutch that sit on there. So There's the brakes weren't all cleaned up. You see, there's a new bush in there. Just push that bush in. Well, push it in. So, obviously, that sits on there. Just made sure that there's some grease holes in here. I've just blown all them through, took the grease nipple off the end. Um, so, yeah, this sits on here. Like so. like that and then we have a spacer in between and then we have the other pedal again that's all cleaned up with a new bush inside and that one goes on there I'm going to get a bit of grease actually for these before we put them on um, so basically yeah that's how it works so you'd have that in the, like I said, grease is up in a second, I'll put them on, have that in the uh, chassis and then these bolt on. I'll show you the chassis in a minute when it's all in. Okay, so there it is in position. You see that? So I've actually connected the brake pedal up. There's the shaft that goes through to the... Well, I might see it better from up here, actually. No, really. And it just bolts through the chassis like that. That's the brake pedal operating now. And then that one's obviously the clutch. Um, and the clutch attaches. And that shaft we were looking at just now goes through there. And then direct drive into the gearbox over there. So it just operates the cl clutch directly. Um, and then obviously off the top of these is the actual pedal shafts themselves. So they bolt through there and go through it, end up in there. Pretty straightforward to so here's here's the shaft of the clutch. Clean that bit of paint off of there. Bonds on there, bonds wash up I have actually got on there. It turned up today so one 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 end. One the other. Okay so here's the two bushes I was just saying about. And I'm going to put this in. No, I'll just put some copper slip on these. I don't know if I should actually, but 
this? Will go through there. Now it looks like it's got to sit the other side of that brake. Oh no, maybe I've got to put the clutch on before the brake. Um, but you can see where that has to go. Um, yeah, looking at it. I should have put the clutch on before the brake. So, not a bobs, I'll quickly whip the brake off, linkage off there. Put the clutch on. And then I'll show you when it's all up and running. Okay, so. I think we've done it. I think we're there. So, yeah, you saw it just now. We did the shaft, the new shaft through the two new bearings. This comes up that side, yeah, that side, and then through. So, I've just cleaned up the shaft now, which is here. Yeah, the shaft just connects the clutch, very simple. There's the pedal, one pedal, and there's the other pedal over there, join oh, over there. So, they've just been painted. So, good. So, that's all done. Braking clutch all connected up, done might bleed the brakes at some point which is relatively straightforward you just crack off the bleed nipples on the back starting or oh, don't quote me on this but I think starting closest first and then you work your way away to each wheel and then you have to keep repeating it obviously keep this topped up with oil um, what I use is a pot with a tube in and it pumps the air out and it can't suck the air back so you just keep pumping the pedal up and down so yeah, all good. Um, what I'll quickly show you, probably be the end of this video now, is just the ignition timing, which I've just, just about started actually. So again, don't um, quote me on this 100%. If you don't understand it, look at the manual or whatever, um, and that will show you how to do it. So over here is, I've undone the plate down, down there on the flywheel, there's a plate and there's a little pointer, and it's got top dead center, uh, 3 degrees and 10 degrees I think and this is what we set 10 degrees before top dead center so you find your marking on your on your flywheel you set it up set your engine up make sure that you're on the right revolution so basically number one cylinder both the valves must be shut so I've taken the rocket cover off and just check that that valve is shut and it is this one at top dead center so number one's at top dead center happy days which is number one which is here so then you get your distributor, um, obviously I've just bolted the distributor in, you've got these um, lock nut there and then the adjustment one here, and you literally just, you can use a test light, I'm only doing this a bit rough at the moment, you literally just twist the distributor really, really gently, this rotor arm turns anti-clockwise, so you literally just turn this very, very gently till your points open. As soon as the points just start to open, that's the position you want to be at. So top dead centre, 10 degrees uh, before top dead centre on your flywheel. Come around here and adjust this literally just so it opens and that is it. And the reason it's 10 degrees before top dead centre is obviously because of the delay by the time the points, the points and everything get to the, uh, create the spark and the spark gets to the piston, blah, blah, blah. So this one will compress the petrol and air mixture then explode so this is what this ignition timing is just to get the spark there at the right time um, and then you've got your vacuum advance here which you can adjust but basically that's your that's your ignition timing done so now I've got to make up the HT leads for this um, and I showed you last time that they screw into into this cap those little Fujima flips so basically I haven't got the, the um, I haven't got the rotor arm yet, but the rotor arm clips down on here and faces this way. So the rotor arm's over here. So this is now, sorry, the rotor arm comes over here. So this is now on top dead centre, or well, 10 degrees before top dead centre, number one piston. So we know that it's going over this direction. So we put our cap on. So the rotor arm point to go over here to number one. So this is number one. Make the lead up down to number one. So that is number one firing, top dead centre, ten degrees before. Lovely jubbly. So the firing order is one, three, four, two. So the next one is three. And remember this turns anti-clockwise, so your rotor arm goes from there, spins round to your next one, 
which is there. So we make up that one right into cylinder number three. One, two, three. Next one, number four, which is row one goes anti-clockwise, hits on that one, so that's number four. So in a minute I'm going to make up another one that goes from there all the way around to number four piston. And then finally, two. So that's your last contact for your O drive, all the way around your O drive, way into here. Make that one up to number two piston. So basically, as that spins around, your O drive spins around there, it's sending one, three, four, two, one, three, four, two, one, three, four, two, and that's the that's the firing order that goes in, and basically that just creates your spark through ignition timing. So really, really basic. That is how it's done. Oh, and obviously the middle one goes to your coil, and I think the coil. I can't remember what it was mounted, yeah, it was mounted about here somewhere, um, I'll have to look back, but yeah, just a single wire from here, out your coil, into your coil, um, and then obviously once a wiring loom is here, which looks like it's going to be another few weeks yet, um, there's a single feed that comes to this, but we'll do the wiring loom separately. Okay, so that might be the end of this video, um, we've done all the bits we set out to let say we've got the brakes, the radiator, engine oil filled up, clutch working, ignition timing set. Um, let's say the wiring loom is a bit of an issue because they've got such a backlog because of the pandemic and everything else. So hopefully in the next two or three weeks wiring loom will be here, I can get that in. Uh, but in the meantime I'm going to make up uh, the seat base, get all that painted and get that put in. Um, we've got other bits. Uh, the electric where they bolt on, where the uh, pump bolts are and everything else. But we'll come back to that on another video, so yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and um, catch you on the next one.